a lone spacecraft launched before the first personal computers, before the internet, before most of the people alive today were even born, is still out there, not just orbiting a planet, not just drifting through the solar system, but sailing in the dark ocean between the stars farther than any human-made object has ever gone. It's been traveling for nearly half a century, carrying technology older than a cassette player, yet it still whispers back to us across billions of miles. And now, it has sent home something no one expected. A discovery so strange, it has scientists rewriting what we thought we knew about the edge of our solar system and what lies beyond. This is the story of Voyager 1, the farthest traveler in human history, and the message it just sent from the deep. The year was 1977. NASA was preparing for a mission unlike anything attempted before. The goal, to explore the giant planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune in a single journey. It was possible thanks to a rare cosmic alignment discovered by Gary Flandro at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Using nothing more than a pencil, paper, and a slide rule, he realized that in the late 1970s and early 1980s, the four gas giants would line up in such a way that a spacecraft could use each planet's gravity as a slingshot to reach the next. This gravity assist would cut a 30-year trip to Neptune down to just 12 years. But there was a catch. This alignment happens only once every 176 years. Miss it, and the chance would be gone for generations. NASA didn't hesitate. In the summer of 1977, just 15 days apart, they launched Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, twin spacecraft built to take advantage of this once-in-a-lifetime window. No one knew then that these two explorers would go far beyond their original mission and keep going for decades. Voyager 1's primary mission was supposed to last just four years. In that time, it would visit Jupiter and Saturn sending back close-up images and data that would change our understanding of these worlds forever. It revealed Jupiter's moons as active, dynamic worlds, with Io's erupting volcanoes and Europa's icy crust hiding a possible ocean beneath. At Saturn, it captured the intricate beauty of the rings and the haze-shrouded mystery of Titan. Voyager 2, following a slightly different path, went on to become the only spacecraft ever to visit Uranus and Neptune, revealing strange blue worlds, tilted magnetic fields, and winds faster than any on Earth. But the real surprise? Long after their planetary encounters ended, both Voyagers kept going and kept working. Today, Voyager 1 is more than 14 billion kilometers from Earth, so far that its radio signals, traveling at the speed of light, take over 22 hours to reach us. It's about the size of a small car, with a 3.7-meter dish antenna for sending and receiving data. Its computers have just 69 kilobytes of memory, less than a single photo on your phone. Data is stored on an 8-track tape recorder and transmitted using just 23 watts of power, about the same as a refrigerator light bulb. And yet, it still talks to us. Beyond the planets lies the Oort Cloud, a vast shell of icy bodies held by the sun's gravity. But before reaching it, there's another invisible frontier, the heliopause the boundary where the solar wind meets the interstellar medium. For decades, scientists wondered what it would be like to cross this line. They expected a sudden change, a drop in solar particles, a rise in cosmic rays, and a shift in the direction of the magnetic field. In 2012, 
Voyager 1 finally crossed the heliopause. It detected the expected jump in plasma density, proof it had entered interstellar space, but the magnetic field didn't change direction as predicted. This was a shock. It suggested that the boundary between our solar system and interstellar space might not be a sharp line at all, but a fuzzy, shifting zone influenced by both the Sun and nearby stars. Since crossing into interstellar space, Voyager 1 has continued to send back data, and it's not what scientists expected. Instead of a smooth, uniform environment, the probe has found pockets of plasma with wildly different densities and temperatures. Some are dense and hot, others thin and cold. These plasma clouds seem to align with the remnants of ancient supernova explosions, as if Voyager is sailing through the ghostly fingerprints of stars that died millions of years ago. It's a reminder that interstellar space isn't empty. It's a dynamic, ever-changing sea shaped by the life and death of stars. Every bit of data Voyager sends back is precious. It's the only spacecraft we have in interstellar space, giving us a direct sample of an environment we've never visited before. Its findings challenge our models of how the Sun interacts with the galaxy. They may even help us understand how cosmic radiation affects planets and life in other star systems. And there's something poetic about it too. A machine built by human hands, launched when Jimmy Carter was president, still working in a place no human has ever been. Voyager 1 carries more than instruments. Bolted to its side is the Golden Record, a gold-plated copper disc containing sounds and images from Earth, greetings in 55 languages, music from Bach to Chuck Berry, the sound of waves and wind, and images of life on our planet. It's a message in a bottle, cast into the cosmic ocean. If another civilization ever finds Voyager, they'll know that we were here and what we were like. Recently, Voyager 1's plasma wave instrument detected something new. Persistent low-frequency hums in the interstellar medium. These signals suggest that space beyond the heliopause is more active than we thought, with constant ripples and vibrations. It's like hearing the faint background music of the galaxy, a sound that's been playing for billions of years but that we're only now able to listen to. Voyager 1 is powered by a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, RTG, that converts heat from decaying plutonium into electricity. But the power output drops a little each year. NASA engineers have been turning off non-essential systems to keep the instruments running as long as possible. They hope to get data until at least 2025 maybe a few years beyond. After that, Voyager will go silent, but it will keep drifting, carrying the golden record for billions of years. Voyager 1's journey is more than a triumph of engineering. It's a symbol of curiosity, of our desire to see what's over the next horizon, even if that horizon is 14 billion kilometers away. It's also a humbling reminder of our place in the universe. From Voyager's perspective, Earth is just a pale blue dot, a fragile world in a vast dark sea. And yet, from that dot, we built a machine that could find its way to the stars. Somewhere, far beyond the reach of the sun's light, Voyager 1 sails on. It doesn't know where it's going. It doesn't need to. Its mission is simple, to keep going, to keep sending back whatever it finds until the day it can't. And maybe, just maybe, one day, someone or something will find it. And they'll know that once there was a species here that looked up at the night sky and decided to go.